Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. This is probably one of my favorite Facebook Lives I've ever done in my life and could be one of the most important Facebook Lives I ever do in my life. And it's because it's covering such a, a major topic that influences our health, our environment, um, just about everything <laughs> on this planet. I don't want to get too grandiose with it, but um, I'm going to be explaining just uh, why and how important this is. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, omega-3s. Now, uh, omega-3s are important for our overall nutrition, but before I get started, I just want to do some house cleaning. Um, so first off, I want to make it clear, I am not a practitioner, nor a scientist. Although I was a science major in college, um, I am non-degree status, but I am very passionate about that. And, and when I was in, uh, I was a biopsych major in college and in, in universities, and uh, I really got into reading studies. I learned to read studies very well, and I had been enjoying reading them for the last 20 years, 25 years. Um, I've come across some amazing studies that when put together, spell out a, an amazing uh, revelation in uh, perhaps what human beings were not only uh, uh, are supposed to be eating for optimal health, but which are genetically predisposed to plants rather than fish oil. Now this is huge. So I just wanna make it clear, I'm not a practitioner, nothing discussed in this video is intended, nor should it be interpreted to prevent, treat, or cure any health condition or disease. This video is for information and education purposes uh, with hopes to inspire further dialogue and further investigation. Furthermore, this presentation is not being about being right. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff on social media which says, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. And okay, that's not where I'm coming from at all. Um, this is not about being right or making someone else or something else wrong. This is intended to help everyone increase our understanding through the sharing of information and the possible meaning and interpretation of the current available scientific data. Now, what that means is we get new information in the science community, new studies are being done that says, wow, this is interesting new information. That changes the conversation. That changes the way we understand things. So it's only up until this point with this current data. But what I'm going to do is take probably over a dozen different studies and show you how each one of them adds to a piece of the puzzle and together the whole puzzle will we'll maybe flip the conversation of, of plant-based omega-3s versus animal-based omega-3s or fish oil uh, or obviously algae oil. Algae oil is, is, very, uh, is basically the same, is preformed EPA and DHA. So on the definition part, when I say preformed EPA and DHA, so we can consume uh, plant-based omega-3s and precursor forms like ALA, STA, and ETA. I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, okay, let me get it up on the screen here. Okay, there it is. So uh, we start in a conversion rate of ALA at the top there. That is found in plants, stereodonic acid, SDA, number two. ICO is ETA, or sometimes called ETE. Um, that's the third step. Then the fourth step is EPA. The fifth step is DPA. And the sixth step and final step in the conversion chain is DHA. Okay, so why is that important? Well, scientists were saying, that ALA at the very top there doesn't convert all the way down to DHA based on observations. So why were they saying that? And that's a good question. So this is where I'm going to start. Um, there was an uh, assumption, right, that, uh, you know, ALA, uh, when observed in the blood, did not convert down to 
uh, DHA. So the assumption was, oh, we need it in its preformed forms like that's found in fish. Well, what is a fish? A fish is an animal. What do animals do? They have to convert this in their bodies just like this animal does. <laughs> that's what animals do. Look, uh, horses, cows, they all need essential fatty acids. They need EPA. They need D DHA. What do they eat? Grass. Do they get EPA and DHA? Of course they do. <laughs> There's no doubt that they do. It's actually in the tissues. We can, we can consume animal products that are completely vegan animals, eating only grasses or, or grains or, or plants, and get lots of EPA and DHA. So where do they get it from? They make it in their body. So when scientists are saying, oh, but uh, ALA must not convert, I was like, that can't be right, because that's not what we observe in nature. That's not what we observe in the animal kingdom. And we're just, uh, frankly, we're not just another animal, but we are another animal. Uh, yes, our physiology is different. But let's dive into that. Um, first of all, um, what is uh, what is the impact of fish oil? So fish oil, about 50%, according to the Wa World Wildlife Foundation, about 50% of all main marine life in the oceans has already been wiped out, extinguished. Uh, climate change, pollution, but mostly from overfishing. Um, and 76% of all freshwater life wiped out. So I'm going to post these in the comments section as we go. So you can actually see the links and um, uh, and we can you can follow along with me there if you want to actually see them in there. So I will, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll post them in the end so that I'm not uh, making this any longer than it needs to be. But uh, Stanford University report, 29% of all edible fish, all seafood, seafood species, have declined by 90%. So of the 29% of edible fish, the stuff that humans eat, we've already wiped them out to 90%, a drop that means the collapse of these types of species. So that's pretty amazing that we've already wiped out a third of the species that humans consumed com almost completely or tipped the balance so much that they're going to extinguish. And we'll probably cause them to go to extinction. It means they will never exist on this planet again unless we bring them back through cell biology. So what about krill and salmon oil? Yep, we've wiped out the freshwater fish too as well. So we need a land-based sustainable source. So the big question was, all right, do I really need to supplement? And yes, about 95%, according to um, uh, the NANAS study in 2003 and 2004, about 95% of Americans have suboptimal levels of omega-3. Now, there may be some question to that because now there are scientists that are questioning the actual testing measures, which are testing just the bloodstream. One, because the omega-3s can be cleared out of the bloodstream pretty rapidly within 24 hours. So are we measuring them at the right time? Is that testing accurate? Is it based on what we consume, what we consume within the last few hours? A lot of those are questionable. And then there's the conversion part. Okay, so let's get back to the main thing that most of the researchers said you need fish oil for, is they the, the fish oil is better assumption. Okay, so this is based on plant-based ALA. Remember the ALA, that's, that's this here. Okay, the ALA is actually... Uh, at the very top, not converting all the way down to DHA. All right, so if you take that as truth, the ALA does not convert to DHA. They found almost no conversion, right? Let's see this study. So this next study I'm going to pull up, well, I'm gonna actually post it, this one in the comments section of the Clean Machine Facebook page. So if you're not on the Clean Machine Facebook page and you'd like to comment or see the posts, um, you can see them there. So I will post the studies there. All right, so this is the first one. And it's a dietary uh, intake uh, published in the uh, American uh, uh, Journal of American Nutrition. American Journal of Nutrition, sorry, I had that wrong, uh, back in 2010. Um, what this study found was that vegans 
had higher levels of DHA, vegan women specifically. Okay, so how are vegan women getting higher amounts of DHA higher than those consuming fish or fish oil? Now that's interesting. If ALA doesn't convert to DHA, how are vegans who are consuming mostly, if not almost all, ALA, because they're not consuming preformed fish oil, not consuming it at all. It can't be if you're vegan. <laughs> so where are they getting the DHA from if ALA doesn't convert to it? So that didn't make sense. And you know, some people want to fight with that study. So I'll I'll show this one to you. <laughs> so study, even more recent study, let me post it in here, it shows that vegans had a higher total omega-3 levels uh, than uh, those who were not vegetarian. Um, now that's amazing, higher omega-3 totals <laughs> than, than those uh, eating fish or consuming fish oil. Mm, okay. So higher DHA, higher total omegas. Well, if this ALA that we're consuming in plants doesn't convert, where the hell are we getting all this stuff? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so the, the next thing I want to show you is, um, okay, so it's clear these two studies are showing, flying in the face that, wait a minute, that's not real world. That's really not what's happening. So if, if vegans who are consuming mostly ALA and ALA does not convert to, to DHA, how did they get higher amounts of those than those who are consuming preformed fish oil? So the preformed EPA means it's formed outside the body. It's formed in another animal, right? So, or in algae, algae preforms EPA and DHA. If we consume them in their preformed state rather than consuming the precursors and then forming them inside of ourselves, we we can there those are the two differences. So when you when I'm talking about preformed, I'm talking about something made outside of the body. Now to give you an example of what that is is like steroids. Steroids are hormones that are made outside of the body and then introduced into the body. And what that does when you consume a steroid hormone like uh, like testosterone, the body says, oh, I've got enough testosterone, I don't need to make any more, and shuts down its own production of testosterone. It can actually permanently shut down your uh, testosterone production. So let's look at the next study, which is the study that says, okay, so what is the reason, how could vegans possibly have higher amounts of ALA and DHA uh, I'm sorry, uh, EPA, DHA, and total omega-3s if they're consuming mostly ALA. And there's two reasons for that. First, they're looking in the blood. So in the blood is where enzymes can actually do some of the conversion. And that conversion, interestingly enough, this study shows the epigenetic conversion. And I'm going to explain that in just a second. All right, that was the last one. This one is epigenetic control of enzymes. So this is how we regulate, and I'll put that up on the screen. So this is interesting that this study then showed that the precursor product ratio, which is the conversion from plant-derived ALA to circulating uh, long-chain DHA, EPA, was significantly greater in non-fish eaters than those who ate fish. And why is that? Well, the researchers postulated the results suggest that the best conversion rates are by individuals who don't consume preformed DHA. Okay, let me explain this. <laughs> so, if you take a preformed source of DHA and put it in your body, your body says, great, I have enough DHA. I don't need to convert any more of that. 
So what it does, it will shut down epigenetics, epi meaning above and genetics meaning your genes. So there are genes along your DNA which can turn on and turn off. And the body will uh, get information from the body and says, wait a minute, we have them on FDA. DHA. So what it does is turn off this gene that triggers the production of the enzyme that converts ALA all the way down to DHA. So when your body shuts off that enzyme because of the presence of this introduced preformed DHA into the body, the body says, okay, stop producing that enzyme because we don't need ALA converting down to any more DHA. We've got enough. All right. So what the scientists then looking in the blood saw, wow, there's little to no enzyme for the ALA to convert. So there's no way that an ALA can convert, not knowing that they had created that enzyme level in their bloodstream by, in, by inputting the DHA. So it's the consumption of the fish that actually shut down the enzyme. And then the scientists assumed, oh, that must be the truth for everyone. What they found with vegans is that when there is no external source of fish DHA or algae DHA coming in, the body turns back on that little gene, starts producing a whole lot of the enzyme, and our body actually starts converting a lot of that ALA down to DHA. That's how those vegans can actually have higher levels of DHA than um, those consuming actual fish, because we actually become more efficient by producing more enzymes, because our body says, bring down the DHA, uh, let's convert that. So it produces a lot of the enzymes and converts that ALA down to it. But you'd only see that in vegans who are not consuming preformed ALA from fish or algae. And this is why I'm a little concerned about all the vegans out there taking algae DHA supplements. They could be actually turning off their genes Look, you're eating ALA and all these plant materials, all your dark greens, all your nuts, your seeds. You're getting full tons of ALA, right? Well, if you're taking a DHA supplement from algae, even though it's vegan, it's mimicking what you get from an animal. In its preformed state, the body turns off that enzyme, and now you're not producing the enzyme that can convert all that ALA that you're consuming in greens and nuts and fruits and seeds, not getting converted at all. You could actually be impeding or reducing your body's ability to convert ALA to DHA that it needs. Okay, so that is one level of conversion. The next thing I want to explain goes even deeper than that. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> so most of the early researchers only were studying omnivores, right? People on the standard American diet who consume preformed EPA and DHA from animal sources, meat, dairy, eggs, fish, obviously, or fish oil. So they saw that omnivores had a very low production of the enzymes and then made the assumption that everybody must also have low production of enzymes, which we now is know is just not true. That enzyme level will change based upon what you put in the body. It makes total sense, right? If you're putting in preformed, the body doesn't need to produce enzymes that change ALA to DHA. So <laughs> it won't. That just makes sense. Um, so it's the epigenetic changes that change the body uh, make a difference on what the body's response to our food is going to be. Now, omega-6 is also a, uh, a difference maker because too high of omega-6 can interfere with the conversion rates of it. So vegans eating a high level of omega-6, like from, you know, a high consumption of oil, like um, cooking oils and things like this, these are high in omega-6s uh, and good, there's good and bad omega-6s. I'll talk about that later. But omega-6s can interfere with the, um, the conversion rate of omega-3s too as well. So that's important to, to take into account. So the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is very, uh, very important too as well. But I want to jump to the next one, which is um, where the actual conversion is happening. So if you do a blood test, you're going to see circulating, which is what the omega-3s that are circulating in your bloodstream, right? Okay, but this new research, this new study came out, and I'm going to post the link to this study. And a little 
excerpt from it. Okay, so this new research in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed that when we supplement um, people with EPA or DHA in its supplemental, its preformed state, and measure metabolic effects, there's a difference between circulating EPA and DHA and metabolized EPA and DHA coming from separation. Now, what is the difference? Circulating happens, there's some conversion that happens in the blood, but most we've seen most of this conversion is happening in the tissues. Now, this makes absolute sense to me. It makes just so much sense to me. If, remember the conversion chart, right? This chart right here. So if the body uh, uh, is converting ALA all the way down to SDA, you will get stuck with just DHA. DHA cannot retro convert or back convert. That's something interesting. So here we have ALA converting all the way down to DHA. Why would you do that if you might need some of the other precursor forms of ALA and DHA? But what they found was most of that conversion was happening inside the tissues. Now, the only way to register, register how much ALA is converting actually to DHA is to actually go in and take out the tissues. The highest amounts of DHA is found in our brain. So you'd have to go in with a needle and actually take out biopsy, a piece of your brain to see how much is being converted there. Now, that's not the best way to measure it. Obviously, doing a blood draw is a lot less invasive, but it's not telling the whole story. And unfortunately, science is not going to go around taking pieces of muscle tissue, pieces of heart tissue, and pieces of brain tissue out of people to find out how much is actually being metabolized in the tissues rather than just changed in the bloodstream. Okay, so this is a big, big difference. And and it's showing through this that you would not want to pre-convert EPA or DHA in the blood if it doesn't retroconvert. Now, that's the next sto story I'm going to jump into is this new study, a relatively new study that came out last year, late last year. Um, okay, this is pretty exciting. This is one of the big, big boom game changers right here is that this only converts unidirectionally. So um, this study, and there you go, unidirectional conversion only. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, and let me pull it back up here. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the unidirectional conversion, which means all of these omega-3s, all six of them, right? All the six of the forms of the omega-3s all convert in one direction, swallow the arrows. So it all starts with ALA, which is only found in plants and SDA and ETA. You can only get from plants, right? These three precursors, it starts out there and then converts all the way down to EPA, then DPA, then DHA. This study, this new study that I just posted showed that there is no back conversion from DHA to any of the rest of the five precursors, none. And that there is no back conversion of EPA to any of the top three omega-3s. Okay, so it only goes one direction, it doesn't go back. Now, here's the big question I wanna ask you. If it only goes in one direction, and once you get down to the bottom, you can't go back, change it back up to any of the rest of the omega-3s. Why on earth would the body take ALA and convert it all the way down to DHA and then get over to a tissue and say, oh, I need EPA. Oh, tough shit. I can't, I can't, I can't back convert it. That would be stupid. <laughs> the body is not stupid. It doesn't want to back convert. It can't back convert. So it's going to hold on to it in its precursor states until it needs it for each tissue going around through the bloodstream, depositing it in each tissue and allow it to absorb into the tissue and then convert to the form it needs for that moment, 
for each specific tissue, for each specific individual, for each specific uh, con health condition that you have. That's how the body does it. That's why we are not seeing ALA conversion to DHA. That would be insane for the body to do that. Of course, it's not going to convert ALA all the way down to the very bottom, this very last step. Why would it convert it there if it cannot convert it back to any of the other five omega-3s that it needs? That would just make no sense whatsoever. As a matter of fact, this study that I just posted showed that they didn't even find EPA converting down to DHA. So, you know, this big argument that scientists had that ALA wasn't converting to DHA, so you had to get it from fish in a pre-converted form was insane, showing that EPA doesn't even do that. The body doesn't even want to convert EPA down to DHA because once it's DHA, it can't back convert to EPA. You're stuck with it at DHA. Okay, so now that we got that clear, let's, the next questions are, all right, so if ALA is not converting all the way down to DHA because it should not convert to DHA, that would make no sense. Get it to the tissue it needs, then inside the tissues, allow it to be metabolized down to the proper form, whether that's SDA or ETA or, or DPA or EPA, or, and then maybe even DHA. Let it do, let the body do its own uh, conversion. All right, so if that's the case, um, and, and I'll even show you this, that supplemental DA, EPA was not even uh, converted uh, down to DHA. So the scientists looked, okay, what about EPA conversion? When they uh, gave people EPA supplement, it circulated in the bloodstream and was never even converted to DHA. So EPA was not even converted to DHA because of the body's wisdom. It says don't convert that EPA to DHA until you really need it because you might need it as EPA or you might need it as DPA. So you might need it in one of those other forms. Once it's down to DPA, you're done, that's it. It's DHA only, you can't go back. That would make no sense for the body to even do EPA. So it doesn't, and that's what the researchers found. They couldn't even find that EPA converts to circulating DHA. Only the EPA once in the tissues started to convert to or, or metabolize or biosynthesize into DHA. That's more appropriate if that tissue needs it in a certain amount. So the next question is, do we even need these top three precursor uh, omega-3s? Remember the top three, ALA, SDA, and ETA. Uh, do we even need them? All right, so here's the next study that really <laughs> sends this home. Do we even really need ALA, SDA, and ETA? And the answer is a resounding yes. Oh my God. All right. So this study looked at uh, uh, actually <laughs> ahi flour, <laughs> and they showed because it had the highest source of ALA and SDA, which both convert to ETA. First, they looked and said, okay, are there um, in, in your typical omnivore diet, they looked at the amount of ETA that was in the bloodstream. <laughs> And they found zero. It wasn't even there. It wasn't even existing. Why? Because they're consuming mostly EPA and DHA and animal products. And um, and so their body was basically shutting down that and, and there was no conversion happening at all. So there was no ETA in there. No, our ALA, SDA, and ETA, the top three omega uh, forms, are they even important? Yes. So this study showed that those with the highest amounts of ALA and SDA and ETA had greater fluid intelligence. That's our body to process cognitive uh, uh, questions. And catch this, total gray matter volume. More brain. They actually had more physical brain left the higher the amounts of ALA, SDA, and ETA. All right, well, if ALA, SDA, and ETA only comes from plants and it improves our intelligence and preserves our brain, don't you think that's important? <laughs> I do. 
oh my God, you know, why are we starting with EPA and, D and DHA when they don't provide any ALA, SDA, or ETA? It's our brain. Why would you do that? Why would you take forms that cannot back convert to ALA and SDA and ETA? It is impossible for them to go back and create that. The only place you can get them is from plants. And that increases our intelligence and preserves our brain? What are you saying? We should all be starting with the ALA because all of the top precursors, ALA, SDA, and ETA, can convert to EPA and DHA. So that's covered. And they're used as ALA, ETA, and SDA for health. This one just showed brain study, but I can imagine what else the body is, is using ALA, SDA, and ETA for. Anti-inflammation, immune boosting. They, we know that ETA actually feeds immune cells. You think immune cells are pretty important right now during COVID? I do. And these only come from plants. They, ALA, SDA doesn't exist in fish, doesn't exist in algae oil. You're getting zero in algae oil. You're getting none. Don't you want higher fluid intelligence? Don't you want to preserve your brain for your lifetime? God, I know I do. Why are we taking algae oil, which is mimicking fish, when fish is actually potentially worse? It doesn't provide any of the top three omega-3s. When if you consume the top three omega-3s, they provide all the rest of them. So which do you want? Half of the omega-3s? Or do you want all six of the omega-3s and let your body convert what it needs? That just makes so much more sense. And that's why all these studies taken together make so much more sense. Okay. Well, is taking preformed EPA and DHA then actually even harmful? Or is it helpful? Let's look at the research on this. The first one I'm going to show you is actually an animal study, and I want to make it very clear. I do not support animal research at all. I'm a vegan. Uh, I do not support it, but the data is out there. I, and, and I'm just showing you this because it's, it's, it's an interesting study. Um, so let me show you what happened when they gave too much DHA can actually halt EPA conversion. Remember the epigenetics I told you about. When you put too much DHA in the bottom level, right? You put too much DHA right down here at the bottom, um, you're actually telling the body to shut off the conversion. So what happens is that ALA, SDA, and ETA only converts down to EPA and then stops because the body says, I've got so much, uh, um, I've, you know, I've got so much DHA. So when you take DHA supplement, you could be giving your body too much DHA. Then the body says, well, stop producing anymore. So all of that ALA, SDA, and ETA that you're consuming in plants then starts to pile up at EPA. So what happens? This study showed too much DHA can cause a halt to EPA conversion, leading to acute EPA levels. So what happens when you have too much EPA in the bloodstream is it actually induced learning and memory impairment. Now this was done in mice. So the next question was, okay, if that's true, is it done in humans as well? And sure enough, so they did it in humans. <laughs> and this is this is funny, not funny. That humans and scientists and doctors have been saying, oh, you must take DHA for the brain. And what they showed in that mouse study was that when you take high amounts of DHA, too much of it, you actually performed worse with the brain. But that was an animal study. So let's look at what it did with humans. So they said, all right, well, Let's take, and this, this is interesting because they used algae preformed DHA in this study, which is really interesting because that's what I've been telling you. Algae DHA is just a, a replica of animal based preformed EPA and DHA, and I would never take it. Um, so, uh, so they gave humans. <laughs> 
supplemental 400 milligrams of DHA for 50 days, right? 50 days of supplementing them and that the placebo group had nothing with soybean oil and in, in, in the, in the uh, placebo group. So some got soybean oil, which had just omega-6s in it. And then uh, this and no omega-3s. And then they gave 400 milligrams of algae DHA, double blind, placebo controlled, 50 days, right? After 50 days, they put them through uh, studies in both groups, placebo and, and the algae DHA. The algae DHA fo folks performed worse. They forgot more stuff. They performed worse on their intellectual cognitive skills studies. It declined their things. Supplemental algae DHA. Why? Because of that animal study actually showed you the same thing. When you're putting in too much of the DHA, that EPA can pile up because you stopped the conversion. Instead of letting your own body decide how much DHA, how much EPA to convert from precursors at the top, it'll convert just what it needs. A little bit of EPA here, a little DHA here, a little, it'll convert what it needs. When you are taking preformed EPA from algae or fish and sticking it in your body, you are dictating to your body, this is how much you have, period. This may not be how much you need, and it may upset the whole balance of what our body actually needs to the point it can be detrimental. I'm going to show you another study which even spells this out more. And that's why uh, this next study is really what sent it home. It was the final home run out of all this research um, for me. Um, this study uh, was looking at the ratios. So they said, well, okay, if this is the case, too much. EPA is not good, too much D DHA is not good, then what is the good ratio of EPA to DHA, right? They're still focused on these preformed sources of fish oil because they got to make this fish oil work. Fish oil is a multi-billion dollar industry. And these scientists are getting paid by the fish oil industry to try to say, show us how it works, right, right? We keep finding these studies that show these preformed fish oil and algae oil and EPA and DHA going into our bodies could be totally the wrong amounts. Not only that, causing detrimental health. And I'm going to show you exactly that from this research. This one was the mic drop. To me, this says it all. So this one is the, the study is called the ratio of EPA to DHA as a modulator for the cardiometabolic effects of omega-3 supplements. So they were looking at, okay, so what is the right ratio? Sometimes eat too much EPA, not good. Too much DHA, not good. So what are the right amounts? Let's try to figure out the right amounts, right? So what they found was interesting, and I'm going to read this out to you because this is what really should send this home for you. Why not to consume uh, EPA or DHA, or why I would never consume preform EPA or DHA, obviously not from fish as a vegan, but not even from algae, because that is that preformed EPA. Remember, it's a fixed amount. And once it's converted, pre-converted state, a DHA cannot back confirm to any of the other omega-3s that we need. So this is really interesting. In this, it shows a higher EPA to DHA. So EPA higher than DHA saw a greater reduction of C-reactive protein. That meant lower inflammation, really important for diabetes, diabetes and obesity together, or cardiovascular disease, CBD. Well, that's great. Well, then a higher EPA must be the way to go, right? <laughs> wrong. So the, then they looked at, the, this is a meta-analysis, they're looking at lots of different studies, and they looked at another study and found, oh, well, a higher EPA to DHA ratio was also one, uh, associated with an undesired greater increase in systolic blood pressure. Yeah, high blood pressure, you know, the number one health issue on the planet <laughs> of human beings. So you want a higher EPA ratio? Okay, just take DHA and your EPA will pile up and you'll cause high blood pressure, potentially. Wow, why would you do that? 
why would you force in DHA levels that may increase your risk for increasing your systolic blood pressure? That would be insane. <laughs> that would be nuts. So which is it? Is EPA, higher EPA ratio good, like it showed in one study, or is it bad, like it showed in another study? It's both. <laughs> That's the key here. It is both. You should be letting your body determine how much EPA. If you are a diabetic, maybe it's more uh, in specific tissues, more important to convert more to EPA. If you have high blood pressure, no, you want to lower that EPA level and allow more of it to be converted all the way down to DHA or stay as ALA. Now, if you have a health condition like high blood pressure, you would never want to convert it down to EPA because that would, that would actually potentially exacerbate your high blood pressure. So of course, we're not going to see the body converting it down to EPA. If that, that condition or that state is there, the body wouldn't do that to itself. It would be harming itself by taking that action. There is an intelligence, a wisdom to ourselves that knows when, where, and why, and how to convert each one of these steps into one of these six forms of uh, omega-3s. We need all six of them. It's clear by that uh, fluid intelligence study that we need all of them. And the only place to get all of them is to start at the top and allow your body to convert its own amounts of each one of those omega-3s to the ones that it needs. This together taken as a whole. When you look at all these studies together, especially this one that shows really clearly. Now, <laughs> they, were, they wanna take it even further and they're like, all right, well, we need adjustable different ones for different things. So they're thinking about making a supplement for those with high blood pressure and a supplement for those with heart conditions and supplement for those with DHA, uh, brain uh, health issues. And, and it's like, okay, so really, your brain may need X amount, like let's just uh, do an arbitrary number, 15 milligrams of, of DHA in the brain, in a specific part of the brain, and you are going to take a measure of that part of the brain, take 15 milligrams and inject it directly into your brain, and that's how you can supplement correctly. No, nobody's gonna do that. Why are we thinking that you can take these just garbage pails full of supplements right, and dump them into the body in arbitrary amounts when they won't be able to back conform. Our body can't do anything. And then you are overloading the body potentially with too much DHA, too little DHA, too much EPA, too little EPA. Why? When you can just start at the top of the precursors and let the body do all of its conversion to each one of those omega-3s that it needs for each specific tissue. I need a little bit more EPA for my heart. I need a lot of EPA for my muscle. I need more e DHA for my brain. I need a little DHA for my liver. Where specifically for each tissue? Allow it to be metabolized into the tissues and let it change to fit those needs. Let your body decide what it needs by giving it precursors instead of dictating and thinking you know better than your body what it needs, when it needs it, where it needs it. So there are four different things here. You are looking at what, um, I'll put it up on the screen, so the wisdom of the cells, uh, to coin a phrase from my wonderful Bruce Lipton doctor, uh, who I love. Um, so what is the right ratio? It's constantly changing and it's different for each tissue. It's different for each person. It's different for each uh, health condition. So if you're a male, you're going to need different amounts. If you're female, you're going to need different amounts of EPA and DHA and ALA and SDA and ETA. You think you're going to figure that out and get it in the supplement? No, especially if you're buying fish oil, which is not giving you any ALA, SDA, or ETA, or omega-6 or omega-9, or GLA in the omega-6s. You're not getting any of that from algae or fish oil. 
What you need is a good source of plant oil that starts at the very top. Then let the body do its own conversion. Plus, make sure you're getting a plant oil that has omega-3, omega-6 in a proper ratio, omega-9s, and, and supplemental uh, omegas like GLA. So GLA is an omega-6. What it makes it unique is GLA is actually anti-inflammatory, whereas most of the other omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Now, we need some pro-inflammatory, right? Uh, omega-6s can make arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is stored in our muscle tissue. When you work out, you squeeze out some of that arachidonic acid and it acts as a cell signal to come over and repair and heal. So some proper inflammation is necessary. Inflammation is a vital part of our overall health. What we don't want is constant over-inflammation because that was when we start creating disease states. So what we need is appropriate amounts of the proper amounts of omega-6s and the proper types of omega-6s, including GLA, helps balance hormones. Actually, highest amounts of GLA in studies were shown to actually reduce not only cardiovascular disease, but all-cause mortality. Omega-6s get a bad rap, you know, oh, they're pro-inflammatory, they're bad for you. No, it's the it's those uh, synthesized uh, omega-3s like in, in, in oils, cooking oils and stuff like that, and the oils that you get in food, the processed oils and stuff, they're just high, pure garbage omega-6s. We're getting way too much of those in our diet and we need to reduce them. So what you wanna do is look for an omega-3 that has a good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, higher in the omega-3s than omega-6. That's why I, I love ahi flour. Ahi flour is, is uh, an omega-3 to omega-6 at a, a 3.4 to one. That means it has three and a half times as much omega-3 than omega-6. That's a great ratio. Plus, uh, some of the 33% uh, of the omega-6s that is actually in there is GLA. So it's anti-inflammatory omega-6. Plus, ahi flour is the highest source of ALA, SDA, of any plant on the planet. And that's why I brought it to market. That's why it won the Nexty Award uh, right there for best supplement of the year. Um, because the research was done on it, it is the best, higher than flax, chia, hemp. Um, let me just go over the comparisons a little bit. Um, uh, ahi flower is the highest in ALA and SDA of any uh, consumed plant on, on the planet. It has a three and a half to one omega-3 ratio to omega-6, which is ideal. And that 33% of that omega-6 is actually anti-inflammatory GLA. Great for women for hormone balancing and guys, anti-inflammatory, great for workouts um, to uh, reducing inflammation um, and uh, actually converts to, S uh, SDA converts to uh, EPA much more efficiently. And why that's important for athletes is EPA is responsible in part uh, for increasing muscle protein synthesis, up to 25% increase in muscle protein, protein synthesis when you have proper amounts of EPA in the muscle tissue. So EPA, very important for all the athletes out there. Hence, another reason why me as a sports supplement producer was really attracted to it because it showed it was four times more effective at producing EPA than flax oil was. Flax oil, the number one seller. Now, what about flax, chia, sacha, and chi, some of the other ones? Well, flax, chia, sacha, and chi contain no SDA and no GLA at all. They are omega-369, so that's better option than fish oil, better than algae oil but they don't contain any SDA or GLA. Now, SDA and GLA are both anti-inflammatory. So this is a, another thing that is really helpful to us. So what about hemp oil? So a lot of people really touting hemp. I love hemp. Look, there's nothing wrong with consuming flax, chia, uh, hemp, or such and chi. Nothing wrong with it. I just want to provide people with the optimal levels, the optimal ones in plant in the plant kingdom and the science to back it up. Um, so ahi flower has 10 times more SDA than hemp and twice as much omega-3 as hemp. 
So better than hemp, flax, sacha and chi, chia. And if you are uh, sticking with flax and chia, be sure to grind it. Uh, studies have shown that um, consuming uh, whole chia, like chia pudding or chia drinks, is a zero increase in omega-3 in the bloodstream. That's because it passes right through because of the mucosa that the secreted by the plant to protect the seed uh, from being digested. So you don't even get any nutritional value out of it. So be sure to grind your flax and chia before consuming them if you want to do that, or simply take ahi flour, which is higher, well, <laughs> sacha and chi flax and chia don't have any SDA, no GLA. Um, and, uh, and ahi flour is a, a complete omega-369, fish and algae are not. They have no 69 in them. They're only omega-3 and they're only EPA and DHA, two out of the six different omega-3s that our body actually needs for overall health. So that's the difference. And that's why I wanted to bring ahi flour to market because it can be such a difference. And I also want to tell this story because I feel like a lot of vegans out there have reached for something comparable to fish oil because they believed, you know, so many of the doctors out there who are saying, you know, you can't get your omega-3s from plants. Just the opposite is true. Just the opposite is true. Plants are a much better source and that animal sourced uh, or preformed sourced of ALA and DHA could potentially be doing your body harm. And we've seen that in multiple studies. So that's what I'm saying is stop doing this guesswork, thinking that you're getting enough EPA or too much EPA or too little DHA or too much DHA. Let your body decide. It knows. When you eat a piece of food, do you, do you tell your body to convert that some into heart, some into lung, some into different tissues in your body? No, your body does that. You don't break apart the apple, take out specific pieces of it, and overload the, the body with specific pieces of it. No, you let your body take it apart and use what it needs for its own purposes. That's the smart thing to do. Consume whole foods and to help support your total omega-3 intake and make sure, give your body the precursors and give it the precursors like found in ahi flour that provide the omega-3, 6, 9, and provide the ALA, SDA, and GLA, not found in some of these other sources like flax, chia, hemp, fish oil, or especially algae. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a huge breakthrough in the scientific community. I am shopping all this information around. I'm happy to provide all the science, all the research, all the links. If you want a, a complete uh, document sent to me, just drop your email or message me your email so you're not spreading your email around the, the internet. But go ahead and message me. I'm Jeff Palmer. Now, I know this is a long video, um, but for those of you who are watching at a later time, you may want to break it up because it's a lot of information. There's a lot of studies in here. There's a lot of new information that's not being circulated, that is not even adopted by many of the plant-based doctors, unfortunately, yet. I'm hoping they will. We have a couple of plant-based doctors like Dr. Clapper. You can see some of his videos are starting to talk about some of the things that I've been talking about. And I hope this information gets out even more and more. Uh, Dr. Frank Sabatino has been very supportive in, in some of this research. Um, Janie Goddard has uh, been talks with her. Uh, Dr. Garth Davis is taking a look at it. Mike the Vegan is taking a look at it. I really want you to share this information and, and talk about this, present this information, because to me, all this data really clearly spells out a very thing. I mean, you can take each one of these studies if you want to. If you're all about ego and you're, a, you know, because I, I, I threw this out to a, a guy with a PhD in, in cellular biology and he's like, well, I've got a PhD in cellular biology and yeah, this is all wrong, all wrong. And, and I said, what about the ETA uh, study? You can't get that from fish oil. You cannot get ALA SDA from fish oil. It's impossible. And, and it showed improvements in brain. He goes, well, yeah, that study's really fascinating. But no, it doesn't fit in with my story. So I, I'm going to dismiss it. <laughs> like, really? That's not science. That's opinion. That's you trying to support your own dogma. It's like, no, I realize some of these scientists and doctors have a lot invested in the old research, in the old studies that said, oh, ALA doesn't convert to, uh, to DHA. 
now we know why the body would not be that stupid to convert ALA all the way down to DHA when it can't convert it back. We know why the wisdom of the body is there. And we know why the wisdom of the plants provide our bodies with the proper form of omega-3s, ALA and SDA. Those two, you start at the two at the top. Remember, start at the top. Begin at the beginning and let your body do the magic. Start at the top here at ALA and SDA. These are the first two precursors. And then let it let it convert it down to the different ones. Boy, this is kind of hard to do on the screen. <laughs> but let it convert it down to those different ones and let your body choose to convert what it needs, when it needs it, at the tissue for the specific individual, for the specific gender, even probably differences in races, because our metabolisms can be different based on our different races, genders, where we're brought up, where we're, what, what even temperature climates we're in may need more storage of certain fats or things like that. All of these are different. We see in Eskimos a, a different way of processing some of the omega-3s. So there's lots of research out there showing that the body needs to adjust these on a constant basis, on the fly. Oops, hey, my blood pressure is going up a little bit. Let's reduce the amount of uh, circulating EPA. Oh, wait, I've got a lot of brain function going on right now. Let's uh, actually increase the amount of DHA. Let it do all that converting. Let it do it when it needs it, for whom it's working for, where it needs it in each specific tissue and at the proper amounts it needs it. Don't dictate, don't drop a, a DHA bomb in your body and say, boom, there it is. Now your, your whole omega-3s, all six of your omega-3s are all messed up, shutting down epigenetics, the epigenetics switching off, enzymes shutting down and trying to turn back off, EPA piling up. Why would you train wreck your system like that thinking we're doing something good by putting these preformed EPA and DHA sources in our body instead of letting our body do its intrinsic natural functioning. Our bodies developed from eating plants. That's what we grew off of. And our plants that we consume give us what we need to do the right things. We just need to stop overthinking this. Stop thinking, oh, this is the right amount of ratio. This is the amount of it. No! Let the body figure that out because when we do, when we step in and interfere, just like if you take thyroid hormone, your body can shut down its own production of thyroid permanently. If you ever have to, for whatever reason, and I'm sorry if you do need to go on a thyroid uh, drug, your body can actually, they'll tell you, you may need to be on this for the rest of your life because it will permanently shut down your production of it. When you do something that is already being done inside the body and interfering with those processes, you may actually be disrupting the whole process and, and getting worse effects out of it rather than better. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know this is a long video and I know some of you probably won't sit through the whole things for those of you who did, thank you very much. But for those of you who come back and watch segments at a time, please share this information. Please share this dialogue, steer people to this video. Let's get this information out there because I don't want people doing themselves harm. Hey, look, if I'm wrong about all this information, great. Let's find out the truth. But I want to start the conversation because the, the conversation has been dictated by the fish oil industry saying that you have to get it from fish. And it's just wrong. I feel it's just wrong. And if you've got some information, some science out there that proves me wrong, bring it on. But until then, I'm going to say that all this research together, not one study. Yes, you can pick apart each one of the studies like, oh, this is done by that, or this is researched by this person, or this was only on 16 people, or the, yeah, okay, so what? Look at the body of evidence as a whole. Look at what it's telling you. Look at what each one of these pieces of information is telling you. Is it all saying the same thing? For me, it is. It's saying that we should be consuming plant-based omega-3s in their precursor form and let the wisdom and the intelligence of the human body that knows far more than this human brain can ever figure out, knows exactly what to do. Just, just when you like, like I was listening to Sadhguru today, and and he says he says when you eat a when you eat a potato, do you tell your potato to turn it into an Indian man? No. How does it know to turn it into a man cells? How does it know to turn it into an Indian cells with my skin color? I love that. 
That is such beautiful wisdom. But it's because we don't know that. We're trying to figure out some of this stuff. But what I am seeing is this studies, this information points us exactly back to let's just let the body do its thing, right? That may be the absolute best. But what we do have to do is give our body the best, the richest, the best sources of these balanced omega 3, 6, 9s with GLA, SDA, and, and ALA. Give them the precursor formats and then let the body just do the rest of the change. Give our body the room and the fuel to do what it needs and do it well. That's the way to go about omega-3 nutrition. And that's why we've had it wrong all along, I believe, by either trying to consume fish oil or animals which have preformed states of EPA and DHA, or even mimic a bad animal diet by copying it by consuming algae oil, which is preformed EPA and DHA, just like it is in an animal. Why are we trying to repeat the bad form of animal nutrition when plant nutrition is superior? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. And again, please give it a like. But more importantly, I don't care about likes, actually. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, is sharing this information. And I don't care about taking credit. You don't have to credit me. Just get it out there. I want to help change this. There's a trillion fish killed every year for food in the United States, Most, a lot of it going to fish oil. This needs to stop. If we do not stop the degradation, the depletion of fish in our ocean, we could tip the balance of plant life in the ocean. The plant phytoplankton produce about 70 to 80% of all the oxygen we breathe. If we wipe out the fish, we could wipe out the plants. If we wipe out the plants, we're going to wipe out most of animal life on this planet because of the lack of oxygen. Let's don't go there. I believe we're going to change it. I believe we're going to fix it, but we need to share this information so that it gets out there and we can make these changes. Changes for our health, changes for those poor fish. I'll just leave you on a parting note. For those of you who think fish is still okay to eat, we breathe air, but we also breathe some water. Right? It's mostly oxygen and, and, and carbon dioxide, but we breathe in oxygen mostly, and we get a little water vapor in. Fish do just the opposite. They breathe in water and get a little air, oxygen, right? So when you pull a fish out of the water, its, it's gills, its lungs, its breathing apparatus are now exposed to more oxygen and not enough water. So it starts to burn their gills like crazy. When you see them flexing their gills like this, when you pull them out of the water, they're in extreme pain. They're being waterboarded. What is waterboarding in human beings? It's putting water over the mouth so you breathe in more water than air. And it causes your lungs to be on fire. It's excruciating pain. That is why they use that as a torture mechanism because it's so an awful experience. Feels like you're drowning. We need high amounts of oxygen, low amount of water. If you change that and put too much water in there, it's it's called waterboarding. It is torture. That's exactly what we're doing to the fish. They need higher amount of water and lower amount of oxygen. And when you change, pull them out of the water, they have no water and they have lots of oxygen. And they're basically the equivalent of getting waterboarded. It is atrocious what we're doing to fish. It's a horrific way to die. They can last for four to five hours out of the water in severe chronic pain. This is horrific. We don't need to be doing this. We don't need to be consuming fish at all. If you want to hear more about that nutritionally, why we don't need to be consuming fish, but ethically, it is one of the most atrocious things. And fish, unfortunately, at over a trillion fish per year being slaughtered are by far the number one species taking the blunt of, uh, of humans' ignorance in consuming animals. And they're dying in the most horrific, painful way. So please, please, Make the change if you can. Uh, I know you can. I've been vegan for 35 years and uh, in great physical fitness shape. So it is possible. And I, I hope this uh, is a value to you and a benefit to you. It's a benefit to our planet. It's a benefit to your health. It's a benefit to our economy when we change it. Let's make the change. Thanks again for watching. We'll have some great guests on the next two weeks. Um, including uh, two, uh, a, a nutritionist and a vegan athlete and doctor, an MD. You want to you want to stick around for those. They're going to be very good, um, amazing guests, um, and I think you'll really enjoy them over the next two weeks.
Thanks for joining me. And again, you can watch this, uh, rewatch this or replay this, and I'll post all of the research in the, in the different places uh, on Clean Machine Online and YouTube or Clean Machine Fit on our Facebook, or of course, uh, oops, <laughs> this way, there we go. <laughs> my name up on the screen there, Jeff Palmer. You can just type in Jeff Palmer on, to reach my personal Facebook page. And if you have any more questions, you can definitely message me. I'll provide uh, the document with all the links to you. Thank you for watching and thank you for doing everything you can do to get this information out. Have a great day.